Hi everybody, this is Jessica. I'm just going to go over how to structure your EdTPA handbook for increased success in both pre-student teaching and actually completing the EdTPA during student teaching. So I've got my binder here. I have printed off a sample handbook and I'm just going to go through how to organize this. So here we go. Uh, the very first piece that I have is the document called Making Good Choices. So tab one for me is MGC. And Making Good Choices is a primer to the EdTPA. It's like a, a shortened version, just explaining the different tasks, how to get started, and just the overall demands of the EdTPA. This in no way replaces the actual handbook, uh, because as you can see when you're flipping through this, there are no prompts. It just is giving you an overview of demands of each task. Okay, so very first thing again is making good choices, making good choices. Now from here on out, it's the handbook. So uh, I've taken the handbook, I put it in the binder, and now I'm dividing it up by a couple parts. So the very first section is called Intro Info. It's the first couple pages from my handbook. So I've got my sample handbook here, and it's everything up until task one. So, okay, so this would be just the basic table of contents, the introduction, the structure, um, just the overview of the tasks. So then I get to my third tab, task one, okay? Then task two. And again, for every handbook, these are different pages, hence why I don't really talk about pages. Uh, and as I read through this, I'm starting to grab uh, like my highlighter and noting any kind of key details that I need to remember. And then task three. And so that concludes like the tasks, but in the back of the handbook, there are some very important things that I have to pay attention to. The next one is context for learning, which oddly it's in the back, but yet it's the very first thing you do with the EdTPA. So I just labeled mine context and that document is the context for learning. Again, this is the very first thing that I fill out when completing the EdTPA. Uh, so it's important to note this uh, very early on. It's a very important document. Then the last thing I tab is the evidence chart. There are several evidence charts, one per task. These are lifesavers, really, uh, because they point out uh, minimum and maximum number of files, but also like how many pages per um, submission I can upload and whether or not they have to be in one or two files. Even the tiny fine print, for example, that my submission needs to be an Arial 11 point type. Um, so very important, the evidence chart. Um, uh, I end up referring students to this document a lot because it just it kind of outlines if you can't get something to upload, chances are you need to look at the evidence chart. Now I'm not done yet because I also took tabs along the top to note where my rubrics are. So I put a rubric tab for all of the rubrics in tasks one, two, and three. And then specifically noted uh, levels four and five, right? Because this is what it's gonna take to pass this thing. So, uh, and then it kind of also made me reread the prompts, but then also kind of point out uh, the differences between a three and a four, that if this is my target, fours and fives, I'm gonna have to make sure I do to get that five, everything in four, and then some other stuff. So I went through and did that for task one, two, and three. Now there aren't just three rubrics, there are several rubrics per task. So don't mis misinterpret this here. Uh, you need to highlight all of the uh, level fours and fives for all the rubrics. Please note too, for every single task, one of them requires research and theory. And so I try to make sure I have noted that. So if I'm gonna go back to task one here, to the rubrics, there we go. Um, so I need to draw attention to that. So I'm sure that I make significant justifications and connections to principles from research and theory. If I draw my attention to that, I'm more likely to remember to go uh, justify in depth how I know good teaching when I see it, right? So, and, and where I'm getting my ideas from. 
All right, so you need to do this for both pre-student teaching and student teaching. So get your handbooks organized well before you begin completing the EdTPA. I would say students need to read this at least three times. But once I have it divided by tasks, it's a lot easier to understand and tackle in bite-sized chunks. So if you have any questions, be sure to ask. Get that handbook made.